So, let's have a ramble about ghouls, because uh, I remember something very interesting recently. So, the TV show is a new thing, and it's getting normies into Fallout, which is very, very interesting, and I've had some very interesting discussions with people who have no idea what the heck a Fallout is. But, I've noticed a really strange little pattern talking to people, is that I don't think the show really explained ghouls too well, and I'm not sure whether this is like a show problem, or whether this is like a just people I talk to are all idiots perhaps, which both very, very possible. But I think the show had a bit of an issue with explaining what these things are, which is really interesting because I feel like in a lot of the ways, the show didn't really overly explain things, which I don't think is a bad thing at all. I actually kind of like that the games do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to what certain factions are, what, you know, because it didn't necessarily go in the in-depths of what the Brotherhood was. I think, like, just... They had a bit of a, oh, we're the Brotherhood, I guess we do Brotherhood things. Like, the show doesn't really want to give you, like, a lore dump, like we're kind of used to in the Fallout community. It just kind of is, here's what's relevant to you right here on the spot. We're not going to, like, delve into the history too deep. It's just need-to-know basis, essentially, which I think is for the best because it keeps the pace going. Which is kind of funny because another common complaint I heard from normies was that the first episode is really slow and boring, but once you get past that, the show is amazing. Which, interesting, but you know. Some of the comments normies have given me about Fallout have been really, really interesting because when I watch this show, I'm one of those people who's like autistically obsessed. I know every tiny little lore detail. I'm like, oh, that's a reference to that. Oh, they recreated that object from Fallout 4 perfectly. Like, th that's kind of weird, Todd. Very interesting. But like, so, for example, you know, stream viewers, my friend Amy, she has no idea what a death claw is, no idea what a super mutant is, and I just, I think that's interesting that you can be that sort of involved in the Fallout universe, and just not know what these very basic things are, and I'm not sure how to feel about the way the show did that. Not that I think it's bad in any way, more that I think it's just interesting that these very basic staples of the Fallout franchise were just completely omitted from season one. Granted, uh, I'm gonna be honest, a Deathclaw and a Super Mutant would probably have been quite expensive to create, you know. Because I think Season 1 was very light on creatures, you know, you have the Yaogwai, which, you know, it, it, it's a big bear, I'm sure you can make that relatively, just get a guy in a costume and have him crawl around on all fours. You can use some camera trickery to make him look giant, you know, because the Yaogwai's not there for very long, so realistically, he is quite cheap to sort of portray on screen. Like, I have no idea how you'd, like, sort of cheaply portray a Deathclaw on screen. Maybe you could pull an Andy Circus and get like a really tall guy to have like arm stilts and run around like that. But besides CG, I can't think of a really, oh, that wouldn't be cheap, it'd be quite expensive actually, but you know, a practical death bolt sounds like a pain in the ass. Thinking about that now reminds me of the Xenomorph from Alien. So I read somewhere that the guy that play, physically played the Xenomorph was like some seven foot tall dude they just found at a bar somewhere. And were like, hey, you're really tall and really lanky. Can you play this really freaky alien? And first of all, he wasn't offended by that somehow, but second of all, it lends this really creepy performance because obviously he is so tall and lanky that he looks slightly uncanny because I always thought the xenomorph was like a puppet or something but apparently it's a dude who just runs around in the dark like pulling weird poses and stuff. So I think what Todd Howard needs to do for season two, he needs to put on his prettiest wig and he needs to go to all the bars and see how many seven foot tall dudes he can find, which, you know, I'm sure he can pull that off. And that's how we're gonna get a death claw. We need to have a like army of, of seven feet tall dudes and they're gonna all be on their stilts pretending to be death claws and he'll find a way to do it really cheaply, I'm sure. Wow, this has got like massively off topic so far. You can tell I just make these up on the spot, can't you? Anyway, if you can't tell by my voice, I am sick right now, and I kind of sound like a ghoul. And it reminded me of a few of the discussions I've had about the Fallout show with normies. In particular, a lot of them don't seem to understand how ghouls work. Like, three different people I've spoken to now are under the impression that you take the little yellow inhaler to become a ghoul, and that's what does it. I think it's because Thaddeus takes the little thing towards the end of uh, season one, and he becomes a ghoul. Other people, I've, I've seen people in my comments, they're theorizing that he might become a super mutant or something, which... Not sure how that would work out. I, I think it'd be an interesting idea, but like, I, I don't, I'm not sure if they're actually gonna do that. But several people I've talked to think the, the, the inhaler is how you become a ghoul. And I can't remember for the life of me if the show made it clear that the radiation is what does that to them. They definitely made a big stink about how uh, Cooper is not affected by radiation when he makes Lucy drink from the poop puddle. But yeah, no, I find it really interesting. I wonder, like, tell me in the comments, does anyone you guys know, do they think this too? Are my friends and family just kind of weird? Because it's kind of interesting how that plot point about the yellow and halo was sort of brought up in season one, but it really wasn't resolved. So I wonder if that's got, like, something to do with this. Because I wonder, seeing as 
it wasn't exactly resolved in season one. People probably just think, oh, this is a normal thing. You just take the funny piss inhaler, and now you're suddenly like a little rot face nose man, you know what I mean? Because seeing as things like power armor and creepy mutants are so normalized in the wasteland, like no one really questions when they see the power armor. They're like, wow, it's one of those things. That's really epic. Maybe the fact that the ghouls take the inhaler is like, oh yeah, that's normal around these parts. I've had to put on my creepy weirdo lore master hat on several occasions to explain to people, oh no, you don't become a ghoul from the piss inhaler. You become a ghoul when you absorb so much radiation. And a few other people I've told this to have been like, wait, that, that really wasn't clear, so. I feel super weird talking to people about the Fallout show in person because it's like, you know when you're talking to someone about their religion and they just, you can tell they're just absolutely obsessed with it and it's their everything? I feel like people look at me like a religious zealot whenever the topic comes up because, oh, I can tell you about every facet of the lore, I know this, this, and this. This must be what talking to Warhammer 40k f uh, fans are like. Like every single topic you can bring up, it's sort of like, oh, it goes into layers and layers of different lore things alongside this, this, and this. Like, I made a short about this where I said my brother asked me what I think is going to happen in season two. And I remember thinking, he thinks he's going to get some opinions based on things that actually happened in the show, but I essentially went into a little lore dive of, okay, well, in the ending, we see this thing here, and we know this, this, and this, so we can imply this, and I felt like I was like, because, so my brother's really obsessed with Finance at Freddy's, and a lot of the time, he'll talk about the game theories, and I felt like I was giving him a taste of his own medicine a lot of the time, like, I've got to push up my glasses, a little anime nerd I am, and like, well, actually, I can give you the deep lore on that building you see in the background. So it must be really weird hearing me just fill in all these weird lore gaps, because it's like, I just have this completely other understanding of the franchise that they just have no idea of because of the show. Because I think Amy did actually ask me at one point, so do you become a ghoul from the yellow inhaler? Do you do that in the, the game? And I was like, well, no, you, you can't become a ghoul in the game, and you know. But I guess it really doesn't help that even in the games, the ghoul lore is like super inconsistent. Because I think in even the original two games, it's said that ghouls need to eat and sleep and drink sometimes. Whereas others say, oh no, I can just be dehydrated forever and it'll be all good. And then you've got Fallout 4 with Billy the Kid in the fridge and just, you gotta question how all that works. So, ghoul lore is kind of a mess in general, which I think they could make work. They could just say, you know, oh, it's a mystery the way ghouls work. Some of them do this, some of them don't. Or you could argue some of them just think they, they can or they think they can't. Like, I guess it can be really weird when I get asked a simple lore question like, what's this? And I basically pull out a flow chart and be like, well, let me give you the presentation. Like I said earlier, I feel like because the plot point wasn't resolved, I think they just presumed, oh, this is normal to happen all the time then. If the show's not really worried about wrapping it up, I guess this is just something people accept in the wasteland, which seems to make a lot of sense, but like... I see why it's confusing, because I'm pretty sure, so my little fan theory is that that inhaler is made by New Reno, because I'm fairly, like, I'm like 95% certain that that graveyard that Cooper was buried in, I'm fairly certain that was Golgotha, where another ghoul has been buried in, in canon. So, it would be kind of funny to think every time you play Fallout, like, 2, it's like, oh yeah, that, that's where Cooper's buried over there, but you can't interact with it, because... Yeah. Could you imagine they do an update to add Cooper into Fallout 2 so you can like dig up his grave and he basically insta kills you and goes, I'm going back to sleep, climbs back into his grave. Like Xanta Claus from Ed's World. Yeah, I'm hoping season two can clear this up, maybe make it make a bit more sense. I'm wondering how they're gonna do it if, you know, the yellow inhalers are being handled by New Reno. If we're going to Nevada, I mean, I think Reno is technically in Nevada, but like, unless their base of operation is somehow mysteriously in the Mojave, which would be a giant coincidence, but it would be kind of funny. I'm not entirely certain how they're gonna explain this without having a POV character that's still in California to ask them like, hey, where's this yellow inhaler come from? We need to know the, the epic lore. I need to know the epic lore behind the lemon inhaler. You know, side note, I wonder if they're gonna add the weird ghoul inhaler into Fallout 5 as a way to actually become a ghoul. I'm not sure if you guys remember, but when Fallout 4 was coming out, the perk chart got eventually, like, revealed or leaked or whatever, I can't remember which one. But when we found out one of the perks on the list was called Ghoulish, and the avatar, the little icon, it looked like a little ghoul in front of a mushroom cloud. Everyone was all like, oh, are we finally gonna be a ghoul in Fallout 4? Canonical ghouls, we can do this in a real Bethesda game. But in the end, it was like, no, you just become ghoul-like, you don't become a ghoul. Which kind of sucks, because I don't see why you wouldn't be able to become a ghoul in-game. I really don't get why it would be that big a deal. Because apparently when they were making Fallout New Vegas, they wanted to have playable Super Mutant and Ghouls. And Bethesda were like, no, 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 that's going to take too long. The engine, you, you need to like, remake every gun for the engine so they can be used by everyone. Now, I get that with Super Mutants. They've got really fat hands, so they couldn't use like a little tiny 9mm pistol. But there's no reason a ghoul couldn't do it. Surely he's just a human with a different face. Like, surely it wouldn't be that difficult. You, you know, this is going to sound like weird, but... I know I'm a Fallout channel, but I've never played the Elder Scrolls or any sort of Skyrim, and I know you can become a vampire and a werewolf in both Skyrim and Oblivion, 
So I don't see why you couldn't have a similar system to ghouls. As far as I'm aware, you can also cure being a vampire and uh, oh, I almost said a ghoul, a vampire and a werewolf. So surely you'd just be like, oh, here's the experimental drug that cures ghouls. I know that would just completely murder canon. It would be really, really strange if you could be like, ghoul, not ghoul, ghoul, not ghoul, ghoul, not ghoul. So I'd say make it incurable, just not ruin the canon or something like that. But like, you'd want a little pop-up to go, hey, by the way, if you take this, your character will permanently become a ghoul and either make a save point from before you took the cam or make it so just you're like oh you did it you took the cam shout out of luck good luck being a ghoul buddy member shout outs time thank you to irrational sloth brandon Freddy, gams johannes no pulse jesus angel rico kamavis tucket flane thrawn one call me the cockroach gamera wilkins coffee and voxes